Hello, welcome to another episode of Maker Melissa's Lab. In this video, I'm going to be going ahead and redesigning the X and Y axis end mounts on here. In my last episode, I went ahead and I assembled the X axis on my Prusa Bear printer. However, it turns out that it did not quite go low enough, and I suspected that might have been an issue. So in this video, I'm gonna be going and redesigning those X end stop mounts. I went ahead and I lowered the X axis about as low as it would go here until it hit these couplers. And then I did some calculations between the distance of the bottom of this rod and the top of this rod. And I realized that it needed to be a minimum of 44 millimeters between there. And it currently is about 54 millimeters. And so I need to add at least 10 millimeters of additional clearance to there. I've gone ahead and drawn a little diagram here to demonstrate a little bit better of what I'm talking about. There is approximately a 17 millimeter gap between the top of the print surface, if I'm using the thinnest sheet, and the top of the rod. And there's an additional 27 millimeters of clearance between this rod and where the nozzle should be hitting. That comes out to 44, and I have 54, so I need to add 10 millimeters minimum of additional clearance. Let's get started. I've gone ahead and loaded the entire X end project into Fusion 360, and I've gone ahead and opened the X end idler tensioner here. We're gonna go ahead and create a cutout in here for the coupler. Now I need to create a minimum of 10 millimeters of additional clearance. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of rotate it up here. We need to cut it into this area here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch here. We'll put it on this surface here because it seems like a good one to cut. Now what we want to do first is create a circle and place it roughly in this area here. It doesn't have to be exact because we'll add in the numbers later to get it in the right place. So we'll just go ahead and we'll type 16 millimeters. The reason I came up with 16 millimeters is because the coupler itself is 14 millimeters and the set screw sticks out by 0.8 millimeters and when it rotates it creates a circumference of, or a diameter rather, of 15.6 millimeters. And 16 will give it just enough extra clearance here. Now let's go ahead and create a distance constraint. As you can see, the circle's blue, which means it needs additional constraints or else you can kind of move it around, which is not what we want. We'll go ahead and hit D to do it distance constraint, and we'll select the center point of that circle and the center point of that circle, and we'll go and move it out here. Now we want 17 millimeters. Since millimeters is my default unit, I can go ahead and just type in 17 and it should all be good. Now it'll move it 17 millimeters away. That is the distance between the threaded rod and the smooth rod. Now, you, as you can see, it's still blue, which means I need to add an additional constraint here. Now, I want these to be perfectly in line. I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape to get out of the distance constraint. And we're going to go ahead and select the center point of that circle and the center point of that circle. And we'll add a horizontal vertical constraint. Now, as you can see, the circle is black, which means it is now properly constrained. And we'll go ahead and hit Finish Sketch. Now we want to go ahead and extrude this out. So we'll go ahead and hit E on the keyboard, and we'll go ahead and hit the, select the circle. But as you notice, it doesn't select the entire circle, so you have to go ahead and select both of these until you get a circle. Now we go ahead and we're going to extrude it downwards. We need to go at least 10 millimeters, but with a little experimentation, I found it can go to around 18 millimeters before it starts cutting into this tensioner here. Now we'll go ahead and we'll select here. We're gonna make it look a little nicer. And we'll go to modify, chamfer, 
and we're going to add about a 0.5 millimeter chamfer just to make it a little stronger and we'll go ahead and hit OK. Now the only other thing is with this washer out here we want to make sure that there's enough distance in. We'll go ahead and hit inspect and we'll check the distance between this line and this line and as you can see it is 2.368 and the washer itself is about 2.2 millimeters. If I had needed to push the washer in just a bit I would have gone ahead and selected this surface pressed E on the keyboard to choose extrude and pushed it in ever so slightly. I'm going to go ahead and hit close and we are done with this one. Now let's go ahead and go to the X end motor here. So we'll go ahead and load this one up. Now the way that this is, it has this extra little bit here to hold an end stop, and this is because it's for the MK2.5S. We want to go with the MK3S. Now if we go ahead and move this all the way over, we can see that there's now a copy of the MK3S. Let's go ahead and hide this one, and we're going to go ahead and modify this one here. Let's go ahead and move it in the middle, zoom in. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch like I did before. We're going to place it on the surface and we're going to go ahead and create a circle. So we'll place it here, do 16 millimeters, hit enter. Now let's go ahead and create a dis distance constraint like we did before and select that circle and that circle. And we're going to go and say that they are 17 millimeters apart. And we can go ahead and hit horizontal vertical. Oh, we can hit escape, select them again, and then hit horizontal vertical. Now it is properly constrained. We'll hit finish sketch. We'll go ahead and select both of these and we'll hit E for extrude. We're going to go down by 18 millimeters so that it matches the other one. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. Let's go ahead and create a chamfer here of 0 0.5 and hit OK. Let's check the nut here, but I imagine it'll be fine. And it is 2.368 again. That is wonderful. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and we can right click on the body here and you can choose save as STL. Choose OK here and then import it into your slicer. Okay, I've gone ahead and imported these into the slicer. I had to go ahead and flip one of these around so that they were sitting in their proper positions. And I'm going to go ahead and export it and save it to my drive and print it. Okay, I've gone ahead and printed out that new design here. As you can see, it now has the cutout here. And let's go ahead and swap these out here. Okay, I've gone ahead and finished putting it together here. I have made sure these are perfectly aligned straight. I put the top parts on here. I went ahead and loosened these after I put the top parts on just to make sure because the par problem with these rigid couplers is you got to get the shaft in there just right. But once they are, they will sit nicely. Okay, so let's go ahead and tighten these down. Oh yeah, that's just right. Just enough clearance there. I probably could have used with doing a little bit more, but I didn't want to take away from the Prusa Bear aspect of it, of it being a little bit bulkier parts and so that they have a lot more strength. But I am happy with that. Let's go ahead and test the clearance between the rods here using 
some calipers. And it looks like we are at 35.4 millimeters, which is great. That gives us like nine more millimeters, so we should be great on that. No problems there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about Fusion 360. If you didn't, it's a really basic tutorial. I've been using Fusion 360 for um, on and off for maybe about eight months or so, and I know enough to do a little, a little simple design and modification here and there, and I thought I'd share some of that knowledge with you. So in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and continue on by mounting the Hamera on here and getting that going. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you aren't already, if you wanna keep up to date, and hit that bell icon if you wanna be notified as soon as I put out a new video. And I'll see you in my next one.